Welcome to Coffee Chats with Kloss. I'm Malia Cueva, CEO with Kloss Financial, and today I'm here with Kyle Kite, CFO, to discuss one of those subjects that no one really likes to talk about, which is funeral planning. Kyle, can you give us an idea of how much one should budget for funeral planning these days? Sure. So this is an important area of financial planning that no one likes to really plan for, as you said, Malia. Although it is the most likely event that will happen and will impact loved ones both emotionally and financially. The cost of a funeral can vary greatly depending on the direction you choose to go. On average, a typical burial service can be anywhere from seven to $10,000, whereas a cremation service can cost somewhere between 1,500 and 5,000. And another option is that some people donate their body to science, which may cost nothing. So cost to factor into any of these types of funerals include transportation of the deceased, the funeral home service fees, casket, headstones, burial plots, viewing, and fees for any additional services you would like added on. Given the immediacy of the passing of a loved one, many families tend to overspend due to the emotional impact which clouds their best judgment. That's why it's preferable if you can take the time to research in advance and to see which is right for you and your family and is comfortable financially. What are my choices and ways to accurately plan for my funeral costs? So there are a few different ways on how to plan and pay for a funeral. So the first is to simply set aside money for your funeral. This option is for those who are disciplined to create a sinking fund for this expense. The obvious drawback to this option is the fact that if you pass away before you've saved enough, your family will have to come up with the difference. Keep in mind, if there are two of you in the household, you may need to double the size of this fund. Life insurance is another obvious option, mainly because it affords immediate protection. So many people still carry older life insurance policies well into retirement exactly for this purpose. There's also life insurance policies known as final expense policies that are designed specifically to cover the end of life expenses. These are small policies meant to provide just enough coverage to pay for final expenses and are generally affordable since the face amounts are pretty low. These policies are particularly helpful for people over the age of 80 who may not be able to qualify for a traditional life insurance policy. Then there's also pre-need policies, which are contracts between you and a specific funeral home, and they will help you design your future funeral service and then calculate the final cost. Then they'll sell you a pre-need life insurance policy, which can be paid off in payments or in one lump sum. So a special note on these, if you decide to pre-plan and pre-pay for a funeral, you should know and understand your rights. The Federal Trade Commission, or FTC, introduced the funeral rule in 1984, which gives you the right to only buy the goods and services you want, to be given an itemized statement of all goods and services, and be told to price the information over the phone, and other rights related to your funeral. You should have a clear understanding of the costs that will be incurred before you finalize your purchase. The third option is funds from your state. So you could rely on your family taking funds from your bank account or through the sale of investments to pay for your final expenses. While this is an option, it should likely be a last one as it could take a much longer time to secure funds, especially if assets are tied up in probate. Aside from budgeting for the potential cost of a funeral, what steps do I need to consider in designing my funeral plans? So we realize that no one likes to think of their own mortality, let alone plan for it. However, we strongly believe that if you take the time to do it for your family, they won't have to make the decisions while they're under the greatest emotional stress of their life. The first step is decide, do you wish to be buried, cremated, or donate your body to science? There are quite a few options and pros and cons to each, so decide which one you think best suits you. So if you choose to be buried, you then must select what you want done with the casket. If your wish is to be cremated, then you must choose where the urn or ashes are placed. If you want to donate your body to science, you will need to take steps ahead of time to put this in place. Some people are concerned with their burial choices and their impact on the environment. There are organizations that promote green burial options, natural burial, and the use of biodegradable urns and other options. There are also options for virtual funeral services, allowing for the ability for families to attend events via live stream. So keep in mind that pre-planning your funeral, you are simply choosing and documenting how you would like to be remembered. Once you have made these decisions, you're done. So what things can we do now to facilitate our funeral planning? So at a minimum, write down your wishes. Indicate where you would like your final resting place to be and your preferences for a service. Consider writing some details of your life story and key points for which you'd like to be remembered and gather some photos that could be used for a memorial. Finally, make your family aware of these plans so they don't need to worry. Thank you, Kyle, for joining us today. And thank you for joining Coffee Chats with Klaus.